What's up guys, this is actually the second video that I posted today. There is a new event going on in game. I posted that video earlier and I also forgot to add that the goons seem to be 100% spawn chances on Shoreline along with Sanitar and possibly the cult at night. So check that out. Go check that video out first to see what's going on with that. Here's how you use the ARS as well as everything that we found with it. What's up guys, Noel here and I'm sure you're wondering what has been going on since the newest Chronicles of Rizzy video dropped, which in case you haven't seen it yet, it's linked below. The reason why I've been so busy is it started a new ARR S terminal and I orchestrate the groups around the world who work on solving these puzzles along with the Sons of Soon. So I was busy figuring out the puzzles that were going on in ARRS. Now that it is essentially done though, I'm going to show you what we found and how you can use the terminal yourself because the more the merrier with these, we can use all of the help that we can get. There's going to be a lot of information in this video, but first we have to thank today's sponsor, Stallcraft. Stallcraft is a free to play multiplayer stalker game with time tested but rapidly developed regular updates this is a truly good dynamic hardcore first person shooter with pvp and pve in an fps open world in the latest update there's a new dangerous location for high level players called backwater plus new end game gear there's large scale wars of subdivisions within the official factions that influence the zone and again that's just from the newest update if you've ever played stalker before you'll feel right at home while the added threat of other players puts you into an entirely different world now if you've never played stalker before then I do highly suggest that you try out Stallcraft because again, it's free to play and a lot of fun. Also with the normal content in mind, if you're here for that, then chances are you'll like this. If you go over to Twitch and watch any Stallcraft streams, there's also a Twitch drops campaign going where you will be able to earn lots of cool rewards as in-game drops. You can play through Steam, but if you go to the description of this video, you will find the UTM. After registering, new players will receive good bonus starting equipment with this launcher. So again, to be clear, that bonus starting equipment for new players is an EXPO launcher exclusive. So what are you waiting for? It's free to play. Go check it out for yourselves now. Thanks again to Stallcraft for sponsoring this video. So during the new video, we found out Rizzy is related to Tan Pant Man from a few events ago. The same Tan Pant Man who had orchestrated the breakout of the people who were abducted by Terror Group and being experimented on in labs. Rizzy was calling Tan Pant Man uncle and mentioned him by name, Nikolai Stepanovich. So that's his motive for breaking them out of labs there. It's his brother that was in the lab. For those unaware, these Chronicles of Rizzy events are soaked in lore of Escape from Tarkov, and I believe all of the information that we get from these, including how to just use the ARRS terminal, will be vital after launch for completing the game and actually escaping from Tarkov. Rizzy meets back up with Gluhar and his friends Chepashilla joins back with him, where at the end, it starts a new ARRS scavenger hunt puzzle. The ARRS terminal has been around as long as Tarkov has, with BSG and Nikita mentioning dozens of times throughout development that this will play an important role in the game, including a way to access it within the game through your intel center in your hideout. Although there will be avenues that you can take to shoot your way out to escape from Tarkov, there will be ways of bribing, networking, and sneaking out as well, almost all of which will most likely be helped along by using the ARRS terminal in some way in game. Now here's how to use the ARRS terminal from the beginning and then after I'll explain what we found, or I guess sort of during. All in all, as long as you really like solving puzzles and code breaking, you'll be able to get through this. You don't need to be a coder or a cybersecurity specialist to get through this. However, it absolutely helps, which is why we have groups of hundreds of people around the world who coordinates this stuff together to figure it out. The link to the ARRS terminal is below. You can follow along if you want. There's also a command that you can put in the console of development tools to speed it up a bit. I'll put that in the description as well. You will want to use dev tools and at times you will need to use dev tools to make this easier to copy and paste things from ARRS because as we found out, syntax matters matters a lot. So now that you have the ARS terminal open, you can check to see if it's working by typing help, where you should then see a help and log it. That means those are your options for this user. Everything depends on the user. This ARRS terminal is essentially a system used by almost exclusively Terror Group employees to work for Terror Group. So depending on whose account that you have access to, you can see what they're working on, where the help command shows you what you have access to with this account. The most common options are notes, users, and files. You can check the notes by typing notes, check the files by typing D-I-R, and check the user by typing user. If there is something else there, you will likely be able to open it by typing what it says. Otherwise, it's going to be a note or a file. If at any point you get lost or confused, join our Discord, it's linked below. There's literally hundreds of people there that can help. Now that you understand the system, here's how to move through an event with it using the most recent event as an example. Step one has been the same for the past several events, default user. So whenever there's a reason to 
believe there's something new happening with the ARRS terminal, the first thing you do is log into default user and check if Mr. Kerman has left us anything. If there's anything new, then that gets the ball rolling. Everything we do is in the pursuit of users. We are looking for usernames and passwords to new users at all times. If you think you found both a username and password combination, then log out of the current user and try it or have a friend there who's got the terminal open who can also try it. That way you don't have to log back in and start over if you were wrong. When you move on, it's also important to document where you have been. This is to avoid having to log back in to that other user as well in case there were clues that were important for the future. We were using multiple GitHubs and Google Docs throughout this event. Documentation is extremely important. You can find the GitHubs and Google Docs in the Discord if you'd like to see them. I won't link them in this video because there's stuff that can happen with bots on YouTube. So go to the Discord if you want to see that. Now, in the case of this event, Mr. Kerman, who we aren't sure the identity of, by the way, well, not exactly at least, but he's always the one that gets us through this. And we know he's German, or at least he wants us to think that he's German. Anyway, Mr. Kerman left us two routes at the beginning of this event, one with a picture and one with a string directly to a username and password. We needed to decipher which was simple because it mentioned it right above. When you find something that is clearly a username or password, sometimes it's coded or scrambled and you have to find clues to what to use to decipher or decode them. There's lots of tools on the web to help with that, all of which is linked in the Google Doc. You'll find that on the Discord again if you need it. Now, here is the most important thing anyone just starting out with the ARS needs to know. When you type in a username, it will never say it's wrong or that the user does not exist. It will always say waiting for password. So no matter what you put in there, it will always say waiting for password. Then you can put whatever password you want and even the password that is correct for a different user or the user that you are looking for. But if the username or password is wrong, it will just say it's wrong. So you have to be perfect. And I do mean literally perfect with both your username and password in order to get in or else it will just say failed. And you have no idea whether it was the username or password or if you were even close with either. You have no idea. Syntax matters. So if there is ever the use of a symbol in a password, make sure that you try everything that it could possibly be for that symbol. Example being the very first clue this time around. The clue here is the pick link from Mr. Kerman in the default user. We saw a torn up piece of paper that looks to be some kind of equation and it clearly says L and P. So this is a login, aka username and password for a user. If you look in the logins file, it also shows one of the user's names is Max Planck. Anybody who keeps up with physics will know that this was a Nobel Peace Prize winning physicist for his equations, one of which called Planck's constant. If you look at Planck's constant, then you'll recognize it is the equation from the piece of paper. We also put the paper in Photoshop and put it together. So when put together, it shows L G A L X three P 6.62, then the rest of the equation making it obvious it's Planck's constant. So we copy and pasted Planck's constant with gal X three as the username and that didn't work. Eventually after we were certain that we had the right equation, we tried gal 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 as the username because it says gal X three, maybe it's gal three times and that didn't work. We sat there and by we, I do mean hundreds of people from around the world between the sons of soon and my discord, a Russian group, a French group and a South American group. All of us were there for several hours trying to figure out what we were doing wrong. A lot of us sat there for 24 hours straight working it out. At one point, even Apple, the senior community manager for BSG joined us and sat with us for hours and gave us one simple clue that we were going in the right direction. However, we never got it until we got a actual proper clue from him the next day. We were using the wrong dash. If you hold alt and then hit the plus key on your numpad followed by 0150 on your number pad, it outputs a longer dash. That's the dash that we needed along with each multiplication symbol as a star. If you typed it any other way, it would not have gone through. So that's the kind of problems you can run into with this stuff. That is what we're up against with these. And it's also what turns most people away because it's easy yet extremely difficult. And you have no idea how close you are at any point because you are either right or wrong. There is no in between. With hundreds of people around the world working on this for over 24 hours, none of us thought to try that. So that's why it's important that we get as many people as possible in on this. Because at the end of the day, it's not actually that difficult. You just need to have the right idea at the right time. So the more people that have the ideas, the better. So from default user, we have two new users, Observer 33-4 and Gal Gal Gal. Observer 33-4 was the first literal shown login and password in the copy error log from default user. We input the strings into encryption identifiers and it came out as SHA-1 or SHA-1, most likely. So we just checked SHA-1 database where only the password came back. So we just tried the password with the login Observer 33-4 that we got from the file logins text and it worked. That one was just a little bit of trial and error and it was kind of pretty clear. Inside Observer 33-4, we found 
in the notes something odd and something odd always ends up meaning something. There were random letters in a face that was drawn out. When you go to the task file, it literally shows a login and password where the login is encoded somehow. Someone in the group recognized that it could be a Playfair cipher because it was five by five. If you had typed out the pasted letters in that way into a decoding identifier online, you would have gotten that too. So again, you don't absolutely need to know all of this. You just need to like puzzles and have Wi-Fi access. After you put it through a Playfair cipher with the key from the face, you get observer 54-5 in all caps. So there's our login. This was the point where we actually got stuck with Planck's constant. So we were deciphering everything we could and found a lot of ominous flavor text that BSG liked to put throughout these puzzles. Personally, I think it's referring to Lightkeeper, but that's just me. This one read, mankind is built in such a way that some people see to the horizon while others see beyond the horizon. I really aspire to become the person who sees beyond the horizon. Every time I manage to get close to the horizon, more and more details are revealed to me. And these details are worth showing. It's important to reach the horizon together. So we had our next login with observer 54-5, but the password was hidden behind the picture clue. And after we got the hint with the dashes on Twitter, someone in the Russian Discord recognized the different dash and then we got through. Because even when it was shown to us, we didn't realize it. We thought, oh, this is gonna be scrambled somehow. And we were still using regular dashes. So yeah, that one was tough. This user was gal gal gal. And inside we found more ominous flavor text that was encoded in base 64. And again, there was more than this, but I do wanna read this because it's pretty ominous and it was kind of crazy. It read, my progress will disappear with me. It goes against the nature of humanity. Mankind has long come to the main idea of survival, the transmission of experience and knowledge further. Human life is a brief flash on the scale of the universe. Looking, albeit a little, beyond the horizon, the truth was revealed to me. You don't see it yet. I will definitely show you. But first, you need to see something else. The second trait of humanity. I'll stop from there. That alone is just, that's, it seems like Lightkeeper and that that's again, that's making me think Nuke again, but you know, we'll go with through that, all that stuff with a different video. It deserves its own different video. There's some crazy shit going on for sure. Now there was another picture in the files of the user and it showed an opened secure container where when you check the metadata, it shows it's been photoshopped. So someone went through it and found it had a code hidden on the card. The code said ROT23, which isn't actually a code. It's an encryption method. So we started to decrypt everything we could with ROT23. When going through log files, all of them but one said corrupt. So we checked that one and it ended up being the password for observer 545 when decrypted with ROT23. So then we have observer 545, inside of which we found clearly printed coordinates of which we input to Google Maps and it ended up being several locations around the world, Los Angeles, Tokyo, Paris, and St. Petersburg. We found people to go to these locations where they eventually found flyers that had codes on them when slotted into a Google Drive directory, making a complete Google Drive link. On those Google Drives, it had a picture. When you look at the picture's specific details and metadata, it literally said the word password with an arrow pointing to a code. Each picture itself was also a clue with the Paris one being green plus, and then the name green plus. So eventually we tried with the password that was shown, green plus that password, and it ended up being the password. Each location had a unique drive and password with a similar setup. At this point, we were supposed to treat this as a race between the regions, but France only had a couple people. Tokyo didn't really seem to have anyone, while Russia and the US, aka the Sons of Soon for the US, were clearly the only groups interested, and we were sharing all the information that we had because it was so difficult, and then it also allowed us to go 24 hours a day. So we just worked together and shared all the info that we found, while this ended up being the Russian branch that we went down. Eventually, we were led to binary codes, which eventually led us to the logins for each of the region's specific drive codes. This was most likely brute force trial and error, and it did happen pretty quick. It was kind of obvious with the binary and the stuff associated with that stuff. It just took a little bit of time. So when you ended up putting the binary here together, it clearly matched up with each of the regions specifically, and we went from there. Russia's was Baker. Inside Baker, there was typed out art, which when decoded using five to seven affine cipher came out to the word Minerva, but it does literally say Minerva. I think someone just found Minerva. I think that note's a little bit wrong, which is why documentation is important here. Anyway, the affine cipher was clear to someone because of the name Minerva, while the five to seven was just literal trial and error because it did just literally say five colon seven right there under Minerva. And through a bit of thinking, Minerva is also Athena. We'll get to that in a second. So Athena, Athene, Athene cipher. Took some time, but we eventually got through it. In one of the files for Baker, there was a literal shown password. And when it didn't work as the password, we just put it through base 64 and then it worked. When in doubt, just either reverse it or just put it into 64 and it ends up working eventually. A lot of times something would be reversed. So keep that in mind for future reference. Inside the new user, Minerva, we found a Google Drive with a picture of Athena, which coincidentally is, again, also Minerva. They're the same person, just what the Romans and Greeks called the God of War. Athena was a hint to Athene cipher, which we used to find a password, Athena roll. After 
after we found that a date was replaced with A3B0 in those files, someone recognized that as a key for a cipher. And in the metadata of the picture, we found another password as well. Eventually, after hours of trial and error, someone tried the username analyst with the password Athena Roll, and it worked. Analyst was again shown as a user in one of these notes somewhere. Again, documentation is important. Inside analyst, we found a Google Drive with a picture of a guy in one of the files. And after putting it through Google, the guy ended up being Blase de Visioneer. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, Visioneer is how we've been pronouncing it, which happens to be the guy who created a Visioneer cipher, or at least he created a cipher and he named it after himself, obviously. So we used the cipher to crack several words and codes. One file was named dot string. So again, after trial and error, none of this came quickly. This was all hours, if not days. So again, we used the cipher using string as a key. We got the file name to come out as out format and an encrypted string that was literally called a password as terminal, same process. And after even more trial and error, eventually someone tried terminal as the key in the cipher for the person who sent a note in the file. And it came out to overseer 545. Using the key terminal on the combination of some random strings, we found in a weird place in each of the files, came out to a new string that ended up being the password of overseer 545. Again, hours of trial and error with that stuff to find that. But at the end of the day, the numbers seemed to be in a weird place. So obviously they're important. We just needed to figure out where and how. Anything that sticks out, anything that's different, anything that's just in general weird, take a note of it. On overseer 545, we were greeted with a file that was titled admin password and was freaked out because we, that's what we've been looking for since the first event, not just this event with Carlos Rizzi, but the very beginning. It ended up being a troll face, which at first got us, but then we decrypted the troll face and it came out to the word observer, eventually after a lot of trial and error using different ciphers and encryption. There were little things here and there that were hidden within the face, the troll face, that when people that really understood deciphering and encoding and stuff like that saw it through trial and error and trying different things, they were able to, you know, figure that out. Later, there was back and forth between unknown 001 and overseer 545 in some of the files and the back and forth messages and notes. So again, after trial and error later, we found the combination of observer worked for observer 001. Again, in the notes, we recognize the phrasing of a note as the same as one that we've seen before, but with different words scrambled. Eventually, after more trial and error, we found the password as the literal password shown, but decrypted from base 64. Again, when in doubt, base 64. We also found a promo code for EOD version of the game, but someone yoinked that practically immediately. Then we moved on to Observer 001, where we found a few files with corrupt data instantly. We found the first line said below fish through 64. Then eventually after hours of trial and error, someone found that one of the lines that we put through the Visioneer cipher with the key below fish came out to terminal. In a different file, someone eventually found a string that came out to Observer 993 using, again, terminal as the key. Then soon found after using the same method on every string from every file, someone found one that said 333 winner three. Like all clues that we find, we tried them as a password with outstanding usernames. So we tried it with Observer 993 and it worked. In Observer 993, there was a single note that read, I see that you managed to get to this point first. That's a great result, which brings us to the next stage. From this regional branch of the ARRS terminal, I've gained access to the laboratory's systems. Now anyone still left in the city can go after Terror Group secrets. I know you're wondering what would have happened if your colleagues had gotten there first, but you can figure it out yourself. Soon after, BSG started that Free Labs event, which is still going. So all of this unlocked a Free Labs event, and it came from the Baker string of users. The Suns went back and started working on the other strings that were partially finished because this wasn't all linear because we did have the clues and the flyers and stuff from the other regions in the world. So when we got stuck up with one thing from Baker, from the Russian lag, we would try something from one of the other places and see if we could get through that one. This is all over the course of days. Eventually, we were able to get through one of the other strings where it said, sadly, you didn't get here first. Your colleagues were able to reach the target before you did from their regional ARS terminal branch. I've gained access to the laboratory's security systems. Now anyone still left in the city can go after Terror Group Secrets. Again, that's referring to the free open labs thing. I know you're wondering what would have happened if you had gotten here before your colleagues. Your branch holds data that would have given access to a secret Terror Group warehouse in one of Tarkov's locations. It appears to contain some kind of potent hallucinogen. So somewhere in Tarkov, there's a secret lab with what I assume is free Abdulbos or something. I highly doubt it would have been a new item or a new area. I can practically guarantee it because this very much seems like BSG just trying to buy time between the wipe because they needed more time to actually put out the white patch. So I very much am assuming it was something that was already in game or already used for a previous event. All things considered, I'll take free labs over that any day, but that's just me. We're still working through to see what else can pop up as there's two more forks yet to be figured out. It doesn't look like it will lead to anything else in game, but as always, I will let you guys know more once I do. As it is possible, 
people that once we complete all of them, something else happens. And again, there are still people working on it. So if you want to take part, join the Discord. With this video though, you should now be able to take part and understand how the ARS works. So I will use this in the future to help out. If you want any insight, just join the Discord and someone in the Suns will help you out. But that's all for now, guys. You know the drill. Like the video if you did. Sub for more. Comment what you think and check out my other channels for other games right here. Otherwise, again, thank you to all the Suns that helped out with this. Thank you to the Russian group. Thank you to the French group. Thank you to the South American group. And thank you to the Tokyo group. We wouldn't have been able to do this if it wasn't for everybody else. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.